Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson of Computercraft Lua. Today's lesson is a continuation of the previous lesson about for loops. As you should already know, a for loop is a block of code that repeats as it iterates over a number. At the end of the last lesson, I explained that you can use a loop to index a table and do something like creating a list of fruit at a shop. In that example, I showed you what to do if you know exactly how many items are in that table. But what if you don't? Let's say new elements got inserted or removed from the table before it reached this loop, and you don't have any way of knowing how many are now there. The number sign is an operator that gets you the size or length of a table. If you put this directly in front of the table name, like so, with no spaces, it will return the exact number of elements in that table. If you set 1 as the starting number in the for loop, and use this operation as the ending number, the loop will iterate until the iterator reaches the number of items in the table. If you want, you can set an amount to iterate to skip over elements, which is usually good if you want to manipulate more than one element at a time. Just bear in mind, if the size of the table changes during the loop, this will not be reflected by the iterator, and the loop's ending number will not change. Once you set the arguments for the loop, they are static. In addition, the starting value, which you assign to a variable, has to be constant. You cannot set i equal to another variable in the same way you would set other variables equal to each other. It has to be a constant value. The end value for the loop, however, does not have to receive a constant value. It can be any variable you want, and the same goes for the incremental value. There are other methods for iterating over a table. If we change the syntax of the for loop a little bit, we can iterate directly over the elements of the table. According to the Lua documentation linked in the description, the for loop I've shown you here is called a numeric for loop. This next example is called a generic for loop. To write it, you do for, followed by the first argument, which is a variable that will represent the index of the current element in the table. Let's call it i. Then you just put a comma. No equal sign because its value will be assigned during the loop. The second argument represents the value of the current element in the table. We'll call it v. For the next argument, instead of putting another comma, you put in, and then a function called iPairs. And that function takes your table as an argument. And then you finish the statement with do. Inside the loop, we can print the same string, but this time, instead of directly indexing the table with the iterator, we can just use v, which is equal to the value of the element you would index. This method is much more effective for iterating over a table, but the problem is, both methods I've shown you assume that your table's indexes start at 1, and they don't account for gaps between elements like having elements 1, 2, and 4, but not 3. The numeric 4 will probably throw an error with 3 missing, and the generic 4 with i pairs will just skip the 4, or it just won't run the loop if there's no first element. In addition, neither of these methods can iterate over keys in a table, only indexes. If you take the i out of i pairs to make it just pairs, you can iterate over a table that has both keys and indexes. In addition, this method will account for gaps between indexes. It's used in a generic for, so it's the same exact syntax as iPairs. If you want, you can create a table with keys to test this method, but I want to show you a cool trick you can do with iPairs. First, let's create an empty table called keyfruits. Then, in the iPairs loop under print, let's put keyfruits v equals i. This will create a key in key fruits. That key is named after the value of the element in fruits, and sets the value of that key to the index of fruits. Now, let's create another generic for loop with pairs instead of i pairs, and key fruits instead of fruits, and then print the same string as in i pairs, but swap the positions of i and v. I will also put blank print functions in between each of these so it's easier to differentiate when you run the program. As you can see, it all printed the same information, but the pairs loop has the fruits as keys and the list numbers as values. Though you might notice that the pairs loop printed the fruits out of order. It says 1, 3, 2 instead of 1, 2, 3. Let's go back into the code and try to confirm something. In the iPairs loop, let's add another operation. Keyfruits i equals v. This will essentially copy the data from fruits to keyfruits. Keyfruits will still be adding the keys, but it will also be getting the same indexes as fruits, and the pairs loop should print both the indexes and the keys from keyfruits. Let's also switch the i and v in print back to match the string above. Now, when we run the code again, it puts everything almost in order, but not really. 
It printed the first two indexes, but then it printed the keys out of order again, and then it printed the third index. As you can see, pairs will go through all of the data inside of a table, not just indexes and not just keys. However, pairs doesn't care about the order of elements. Therefore, this is not the best for creating a list if it's meant to be in a particular order. However, it's still good if you need to go through all the data in a table for any reason. Let's say you wanted to change the values in a table. Well, if you change V, which is a representation of the current element in the table, it will not change the value of the element. Let's do this to demonstrate. As you can see, I changed the value of V, but the elements in the table are still the same. That's because, as I said, V is a representation or a copy of the table element, but it is not the table element itself. If you want to change the element itself, you will need to index or key the table. With this code, we have changed every single fruit to bananas, so now the shop only sells bananas. That is it for this lesson. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been practicing Lua for over 6 years, but I've only fairly recently learned about generic for loops. I really wish I had learned this earlier on because it would have made my program so much more efficient. If you have any questions about this lesson, please feel free to ask in the comments section. I also have a request. Let me know if there are any video apps or websites besides YouTube that you like, and if you think these videos would be a good fit for them. I wanted to upload this series to multiple platforms to reach as wide an audience as possible, but the only other website I wanted to use, Twitch, won't allow uploads without affiliate or partnership, which I do not have. If you have any suggestions, please do let me know. Once again, thanks for watching.